We jump back into a series that we've been going through this entire year. For some of you, if you're new here, you're saying, what series? It was the idea of the story. God's story. How he, he made this universe in humanity and, and, and sin corrupted it. And from that time on, he said, I need to bring my people back to me that we might be in a relationship again, a friendship, a loving friendship. And he says, I know how I'm going to do that. I'm going to send Jesus. And I'm, I'm going to foretell this whole time. I'm going to walk through the prophets and, and some of the kings and we're going to say, someday I'm going to make everything right between, for my people. And Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified. He was, died and he was buried. And he descended into hell. But the third day he rose again. That is our story. And now he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from there he'll come back someday to judge the living and the dead. And that is God's story. How, how he has brought his people so that they might know him. You know, the early church knew this story. They, they understood this. And, 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 and let me tell you about the, the early church. In, in Acts 2, it, it talks about the early church this way. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. This was the early church. They were in the family. They, they would look at all the people around them in, that they called themselves Christians and say, you're my family. You're a fellow brother. You're a fellow sister. They, they were into charity. They would, they would give away their, their belongings to those that needed it. They had some needs at the time. And they said, how can I help them? They were into sharing the good news. He said, let me tell you God's story. Let me tell you how Jesus is the very center of it and brings us back to him. They were into to worship. They would, they, would go, they, would, they would eat meals together, but they would also go to the, the, the temple and they would worship God there. This was the early church. And you're saying, well, that's great. That's awesome. They had found real life. I mean, real life. But it was not always so. And imagine this. It was, these same people ran away from Jesus. They had a story that they were running as fast as they could away from, from God and, and His rescue mission. They, and they, what could change people so that this was them? This grouping of people that claimed to be Christians. What would change people so that what I just read described them? What would do that? What was it that changes even us? Let me give you the short answer. The short answer is the Holy Spirit changes people. The, the night before Jesus was betrayed, he was talking with his friends. He was in an upper room. He says, let's, let's celebrate the Passover together. We're going we're gonna to just talk. And, and, and all for the last couple months, Jesus had said, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die there. And they kind of put it out of their minds and said, oh, Jesus is just talking. Maybe he's talking figuratively, maybe. His last night with his friends speaks to them out of John chapter 14. Let me read that with you. It says, if you love me, Obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. 
When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. What changes rebellious people, vagabonds, people that are going their own way, people that would run away from Jesus, what changes them into believers? People that have faith in our Lord Jesus. What changes people? What changes you? It's the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit is one of those, someone wrote a, a book a while ago called The Forgotten God. Oh, we know God the Father because He's the Creator. We know God the Father. We know God the Son, the Jesus. You know, the Bible, that's all about Jesus. This, this Holy Spirit one, ah, we don't know about it. We, no, we, we're just not, we don't talk about the Holy Spirit. Unless you go to one of those churches that raise their hands all the time and, and speak crazy languages. Now, they talk about the Spirit. It's kind of a forgotten part of our churches. We don't talk about the Spirit and how He changes us to be God's people. So let me give you, I'm going to give you three big ideas, big pictures of the Holy Spirit and how it is applicable right to you today, active in your life. So follow me on this. First one is this. The Spirit is in you. The Spirit is in you. And some of you are saying, oh, that's kind of strange. Like, is that next to my spleen or something like that? I, I don't know where he is. And, and, and in case you're going to wonder, I, I know biology people in my, my house, they will affirm that there's no spot inside your body that says, oh, this is your soul. This is where the Holy Spirit lives. It's not a physical thing. The Holy Spirit is in you. It, imagine that you're, you're, your whole being is like a house. Because you are born body and soul. You are a soul. And, and, and you're like a house that, that the Spirit says, I'm living in you. I'm going to change you from the inside out. Once your, your whole being was occupied by Satan, it was a nasty place inside. There's a deep darkness inside your soul. No longer, I'm coming in. When you said yes to Jesus, I came in and we cleaned this. There's still spots we got to work on, but it's, this house is under construction. It, it, in Romans 5, it talks about, for we know how dearly God loves us because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. He lives inside of us. And, and this is great news. Hopefully, hopefully, you're looking at me like, man, I don't talk about the Spirit. I don't know this stuff. But this is great news. Our God is he's opened the doors of our heart and said, I'm cleaning it up. And the Spirit will lead you to, to one step at a time to make you more like Jesus, that your soul is pure and clean forever. And we don't think about this. Like, we think it's like, well, it's just part of life, right? It just all of a sudden happens. It's the work of the Spirit inside of you. And even more, it's a package deal. Our God says, hey, all right, I'm sending the Spirit inside of your heart. We're all coming. We're all coming. Let me, let me read a little bit to you. In Ephesians chapter 3, it says this. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. So not only is the Spirit coming in, the, Jesus said, I'm coming in too. We're all in there. We're, we're changing you from the inside out. And God the Father is saying, I, I, don't leave me out of this. John 14 says, when I, Jesus says, I am raised to life again, you will know that I'm in my Father, and you're in me, and I'm in you. Because we're all there. And for some of us, uh, our, our brains are spinning now. Like, oh, I don't understand this. But it, it, there's not a time that, that we have to say, well, you know, 
I guess I need to ask God the Father in my heart now. Or no, 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 I, I need to ask the Spirit to come into my heart. They all said, when you said yes to Jesus, we all came. I am always with you now. There's not a place that God doesn't say, you're mine. That's you on the inside are His, and He is there with you. And for some of us, that's just totally strange. But God's presence is always with you now. His very presence is always inside. It's, it, you're not separated from His presence now. You know, Psalm 139 says, hey, I can go to the far side of the, the world. You're still there because you're in me. I can go to the far side of the moon, the dark side of the moon. You're still there. You're right inside of me. Your presence I am, I am never absent from God's presence. Do, do you understand that? Our God said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm not going to abandon you or forsake you. I am always going to be with you. Grab a hold of that comfort when you are so despondent or hopeless or so filled with fear that our God is always with you, His very presence. May we always be aware of it. But not only is, is He in us, this is another fun one, the Holy Spirit is for us. He is for us. And, and some of you are saying, well, I'm already stretched on the first one that He's in me. Uh, he's for us. The, the word in John 14 that Jesus uses is called paraclete. And nobody uses that. It's not a bird. It, 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 it's a word that means comforter or counselor or advocate. And, and the, the New Living Translation uses the word advocate. And the word advocate talks about a person who publicly supports or pleads on someone else's behalf. On someone else's behalf. <laughs> Namely, our behalf. And if anybody has ever been to court before, no, I won't ask. And I'm not even going to ask why you've been to court. But if you've been to court before, you should really be thankful that you had an advocate. We call them lawyers. In England, they call them counselors. But an advocate, someone that says, I am going to do all in my power to make sure you get the best deal possible. I, we're going to work this all together. I'm going to work on your behalf. I was driving to, to Iowa this last week, and there's billboards up for, uh, for lawyer, personal injury lawyers. There's just billboards. And, and a couple of them are like, we'll fight for you. Yeah, I'm laughing at these lawyers. It was kind of fun. Or, or one, a couple of them have like the hammer. Or the hammer for you. We're working for you. But that's, our, that's the Holy Spirit. He's always working for you. He will always fight for you. He, imagine you're before Almighty God and, and the Spirit says, wait a minute. This one's, this one's yours. Through Jesus, He's paid the price for this one. It's all, this person over here, the accuser, we call it Satan or the devil, he's accusing us like, I, look at all the things this person's done. He's a total wreck. He's rebellious. He's poked you right in the eye, God, how many different times. He's worthless. Why don't you just give him to me? And our advocate says, no, no, no. Jesus paid for this person's sins. He's pure and clean before you. He's the advocate for you all the time in every area. He is always fighting for you. And some of us might say, whew, great, I got an advocate. The Holy Spirit's going to do all the work I don't need to do anymore. He's got it covered. 
And if that's your thought, I, I want to just gently chastise you and say, stop being lazy with your walk with Jesus. Just stop being lazy about it. The Spirit will lead you and say, wow, we need to take care of this. No, 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 I don't want to take care of that. Just, God, just leave me alone. Don't leave that part of my life alone. The Spirit leads you to that and say, God, He wants to take care of this. And, and, and when you hear that voice in your head saying, we need to take care of this, don't, don't just run away from it. Because you're, He always comes back to it. It, it might not be right away, but he'll come back to it and say, I'm working for you. I want to make you holy before my, Almighty God. And we're going to come back to this all the time. And you're thinking, oh, I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to walk with Jesus this way. No, Jesus is over here saying, well, we've got to walk and take care of this. I'm kind of vague in this, like what this is, because each person has something. That the Spirit's saying, what about this in your life? What, what about this? I remember distinctly my, my freshman year of college where the, the Spirit just like, he was working so overtime on me because he had a lot to work with there, right? And, and he, he, he would always come down to, all right, so what about this? What about your, um, what about the parties you're going to? Can, can we talk about that? Oh, no, no, that, 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 you're good over there. Just um, nothing to see here, Spirit. Nothing to see. And we always keep coming back to things like that. Like, okay, okay, okay. I'll work on this. I know I got to, I need to give this over to you. All right, so, so I got another thing here. And the Spirit would lead me to like, all right, what about your relationships with girls? I don't know, not, definitely nothing to see there. Come on, come on. Yeah, there's other things that you can, there's some other people that you should be worried about, Spirit. Not this. Spirit is always working for you before God. And he's always bringing up things that, all right, this is an area that we, it's still, there was dark spots in your life, blind spots if we, if we say, and we need to work on those. So, so don't just run away from them and say, I'm not going to talk about them. Now you have a partner to deal with them. You have a partner you know, Romans chapter 12 says, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That, that's, that's what, our, that's what our, our spirit does. He transforms our mind. But once you get it right in your head, chances are your behavior is going to work that way. He's always working for us that we might, we might work, that we might be right before God. So what's your... Uh, how are you working with your partner, the Spirit? It, it, I, I don't pause there. Just I'll pause there a second so you can think about, all right, are, are you working? You know, when the Spirit says, all right, what about this? What about this in your life? Are you saying, um, I know you're my partner, Spirit, but I'm, I need to go away and leave that alone so maybe you'll just ignore it? Do you have a plan that you're working with your partner? You know, it's not about being nicer. It's not about following all the rules. It's about being more holy before God. And I know that in some churches that it's, if you follow all the rules, if you're nice to people, if you smile to them, uh, you're like a, obviously the Spirit's doing a great job and you're a just perfect person. But the Spirit always works on us, on those things that nobody else sees. And some of the things other people do see there's always those things that we don't want anybody else to know about. Spirit is always in us, and he's always working for us. He doesn't tire. So I, 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 got, I got all the patience that, I, I, that you could ever imagine. I'll stay with you. We'll work on it. Come on, let's, let's partner with me so that we can take care of this. Let me go with one more. Spirit is in you. The Spirit is for you. He's always working for you. But the Spirit points to Jesus. Always points to Jesus. 
If, if you go into your theology books, it, it never says like the Spirit is out there saying, hey, pay attention to me. Pay attention to me. I'm the Spirit. He's always saying, hey, it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. How can, how can we think like Jesus? How can we speak like Him? How can we do things as He would do them so that, that we are in relationship with Almighty God? The Bible says this in, in verse 16 and 17. Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you an, another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Spirit who leads into all truth. Jesus said, I, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. The Spirit says, I will lead you to all truth. I will lead you to Jesus. Now, there was a, there was a college freshman who's taken a very challenging math course. And the final exam was looming, and the, and the, the professor was very merciful. He says, if you take a, an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, you could take that to class, the, the exam. And you can write as much as you want on there. And some people did. They like, did really small, and they, they had their, their magnifying glass so that they could read all their notes that they wrote down there. And some of you guys would do that, right? This is what happened. Day of the exam comes. This one, this one boy comes in, sits in his seat, puts his sheet of paper down, and in comes his friend and stands on the paper. His friend is a graduate math student who in this course, he aced it when he went through it. Comes in and the professor's going, what is going on here? You, who is this guy? He says, you said anything that would fit on this sheet of paper, I could bring in. And he easily fits on that sheet of paper. The Spirit leads us to the truth all the time because Jesus is that answer. He's always on our behalf. I, want, I, I wish that we could have this, not on a bracelet, but the WWJD thing was such a great idea. Because the Spirit was behind that idea, like, hey, what would Jesus do? This, this guy is just annoying. He's annoying me. I can't deal with this person. What would Jesus do? You'd say, maybe, maybe you could uh, see them spiritually and see what they've got going on in their life. Maybe they're annoying you because they don't know how to say that they, they respect you. Or maybe they got some crazy things going on in their life. What if you looked at them spiritually? Maybe they're looking at the hope that you have in your life and they're saying, man, I wish I had that, but I can't show that. Now, what would Jesus do? The Spirit says, hey, what would Jesus do? You know, this, this person is talking behind my back all the time. It really gets me angry. And the Spirit says, what would Jesus do? You know, maybe you should go talk with them. You know, lovingly confront them. Hey, is, is this what's happened? Are you really talking about me behind my back? You know, that kind of hurts. You know, maybe, maybe you could forgive them like Jesus did. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And the Spirit is always saying, all right, what would Jesus do? How can we think like Him? that we might know the mind of God. Then how can we speak like Him, speak words of life to other people, loving words to them? How can we, how can we act with compassion for people that are spiritually broken? What would Jesus do? Because the Spirit always will point us to Jesus. He's like this big arrow. <laughs> Go check out what Jesus would do. It was the second century. There was this man, Diogenes. I can't even say this name. It's some Greek name. I don't speak Greek anymore. He was saying, all right, there's something about these people. They, they belong to this grouping of people called the Way. 
Christians. He says, I am curious about them. And he, he, he said, all right, I'm going to grab this guy. He, go find out about these guys. Come back with a report. This guy comes back with a 10-chapter letter to Di Diogenes. And, and, and he describes how Christians act, act, why they act this way, what they profess. Ten chapters. I want to read a little bit because this is what the Spirit does in people. This is, this is how it changes people. I'm, I'll just re read, a, read a little bit from this, this letter. Christians live in their own countries, but they, do so, but they do so as those who are passing through. As citizens, they participate in everything with others, yet they endure everything as if they were foreigners. Every foreign land is like their homeland to them, and every land of their birth is like a land of strangers. They marry like everyone else, and they have children, but they do not destroy their offspring. They share a common table, but not a common bed. They exist in the flesh, but they do not live by the flesh. They pass their days on earth, but they are citizens in heaven. They obey the prescribed laws all the while, surpassing the laws by their lives. They love all men, and they are persecuted by all. They are unknown and condemned. They are put to death and restored to life. They are poor, yet make many rich. They lack everything, yet they overflow in everything. They are dishonored, and yet they, they're very dishonored. They are glorified. They are spoken ill of, and yet are justified. They are reviled, but blessed. They are insulted, and repay the insult with honor. They do good, yet are punished as evildoers. When punished, they, re they rejoice as if raised from the dead. They are assailed by the Jews as barbarians. They are persecuted by the Greeks, Yet those who hate them are unable to give any reason for their hatred. This is the life that a, the Spirit leads Christians to. They're like aliens in this country. Their citizenship is in heaven with God Almighty. They live in the presence of God. They are aware of it. And the people around them, they're, they're puzzled by these people who live spiritually. It's not just the physical world all the time. They live spiritually. You know, this is the life that the Spirit leads us to. More than just what your eyes can see and your hands can feel, your tongue can taste. There's more to this world. There's real life out here that the Spirit leads us to. Do you hear that call to something greater than what you see around you? Because the Spirit's calling you to real life. The Spirit is in you, and He is for you. And He's always pointing you to Jesus. When you leave today, remember the Spirit goes with you. The Spirit is always with you. Pray with me. Father, Spirit, Jesus, we worship You today for who You are and what You do in our lives. We thank You for transforming our very souls. And thank You for Your patience as You transform us. Spirit, point us to Jesus this week as we continue to partner with You that You might make us all that You have in store for us. God, give us your peace. We thank you, God. Amen.